So children should not be in any way the education access that they have should never be a function of who they are. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, in 2017, 17.4% of children in the United States were living in poverty. While almost one in five children in this country are living in poverty, they are not getting the help they need and deserve. In the United States, there are still countless articles written about the gaps in education that are caused by poverty. And the United States Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, may be making the gap even wider. Instead of supporting these children, students, she wants to remove funding from 800 poor rural schools because administration is failing to do their job. I don't understand why you think it's such a hard choice to cut every single federal dedicated literacy program at a time when only one third of our school kids can read. The reality is that where we're seeing the most gains in terms of student literacy is those states that have decided to focus in on this and have expected that kids read by third grade before being graduated on. We need to focus more on this, but those solutions are best, uh, are best done at the state and local level. Actions like these are what cause innocent children to be unable to reach their fullest potential. Poverty is not only faced by students around the country, but also many students in Prince George's County. According to the Maryland Poverty Profiles, in Prince George's County, in 2016, 13.7% of children under 18 live under the poverty line. Additionally, according to the Maryland Report Card, 63.5% of students in the county have free and reduced lunch. This is ironic considering that Atlantic Back Star put some communities in Prince George's County as the richest African American communities in the country. Okay, you find lower income students disproportionately in a place like Baltimore City, mm -hmm. and disproportionately in some parts of Prince George's County. In some parts, this county is so large, by the way, it's the second largest county physically in America. So it's huge. Okay? From Laurel at the top, all the way down through Greenbelt, right down through Fort Washington and Akinkee. It's just huge. Okay? So you can find whatever you want. You can find the highest income, the most affluent families, to the ones that are most challenged. While often people think about graduation rates and test scores when talking about these schools, students living in poverty need support in non-academic ways too. Often, in these situations, school counselors are the people students come to for help. Have students come to school with like a lot of unmet needs, you know, like insecure housing, access to food, transportation, um, you know, maybe parents who are unemployed or underemployed. Um, so it's like leads to a lot of economic insecurity. And just brings kids to school not always in the best place to learn. After have master's degrees. In, in school counseling, and um, they have to be, uh, they have to have a state certification as a professional school counselor. Yeah, it's it's based on um, the um, enrollment of the school. Uh, most elementary schools have a, one counselor, uh, and then. Uh, you know, depending on the size of the middle and high school, it could be anywhere from uh, uh, two counselors uh, to seven. Yeah, you know, in some high, some of the larger high schools, they may have six or seven um, counselors. In an email from Dr. T. Jamison, she expressed that students come to her three to four times a week for non-academic issues on average. Considering that so many students come to counselors for these issues, there should be tools to support them, but there seems to be a disconnect between where the resources are going. Um, so obviously I have a wall over here. That's one of the things I always, any type of resource I get, I make sure I put it on the wall because, um, like I said, when I was a case manager, I was familiar with some resources in the area that help kids with pant food pantries, clothes, local nonprofits that try to help kids in need, so I always try to refer them to them. Um, and then any type of new ones I learn about, I make sure I put up on my wall so that students know um, if you're going through anything. For example, someone brought me one for expecting mothers. So if I, was, I get the news, obviously, if someone's expecting, I try to refer them there.
In Eleanor Roosevelt, where the free and reduced lunch rate is 42%, there is a large focus on the training and the counselors are well equipped. This completely contrasts the feeling of some of the counselors at schools where the farm's rate is much higher and the students really need support and resources. At Northwestern High School, with a 68% farm's rate, a counselor, Erica Durr, spoke about the need for change. Um, I wouldn't say that there's specific tools, but there are different resources that we can reach out to to assist us when we are dealing with students who um, are low-income families. We would look for support just for the family in general. Um, how can we support the family to where um, they are in a place where they're comfortable, you know, whether it be job training, um, counseling, family counseling, because you never, you, you don't know why some of these students are in the situations that they are. So I will look for different things like that and, and community partnerships to assist with that family. The counselors are not the only ones that feel like they are lacking training and tools. The students also feel like they are set aside. I guess we could if they were like friendlier. Mm -hmm. But usually we just like resort to teachers that we like even like talking about to us when we're when we have to do um like for schedules or stuff because mm -hmm. usually they just want to do it themselves and not actually want to talk to us because like sometimes they don't actually care per se. One of my most memorable experiences is when I went to a counselor. It wasn't a good one. I remember I went to my counselor because I wanted to talk about dual enrollment and like my career path. My youth lady doesn't believe in me and she told me she thinks I'm not going to college and I need to be more realistic and focus on just graduating high school. When I'm going through all this, I hear yelling in the hallway and this kid cursing out a security guard and he punches a hole in my guidance counselor's office wall. And when that happened, I just got pushed aside and kicked out, and then everyone started to go and, like, work towards this kid and, like, start to school him and talk to him and make sure he was getting his 60s and everything. But they didn't, she never called me back. She never addressed me. She just forgot about me. If I can't even trust them to put me in the proper classes for the following year, how can I trust them with, like, more serious issues? Additionally, teachers are aware of the need for more support. Teachers, because teachers just have like a lot on their plate in terms of actually you know, teaching them all day long and not always able to like deal with all their other unmet needs. Um, so guidance counselors are good. I mean, a lot of times schools have like social workers and other things as well. But I think all of those people can help out. While this is true, not everyone feels as if more counselors and tools are necessary. Some think that there is a desperate need for change to help these students, but others believe that it is the mindset that matters. I mean, I personally don't, but some people might consider it helpful, but I mean, if you just treat everybody the way they want to be treated, then I don't see why you would need it. We try to provide them with as much information as we can. While everyone may not agree that there is a need for an increase in support given, it is obvious that change is necessary. A positive relationship with a counselor is a crucial step for success among many children facing poverty. Taking the most out of their opportunities here at school could help them move out of poverty later in life without the support of their guidance counselors. Students may not have the motivation to do so. These students often do not have a person to talk to at home, and schools need to be there to close that gap. Without this support and motivation, students from these low-income families do not have the tools to push forward. This leaves them struggling to pass high school and continue to college or higher career opportunities. Without even a high school diploma, students are often unable to find secure, well-paying jobs, which leaves them in poverty and continues the cycle. While giving school counselors extra tools and training isn't an immediate fix for our country's public education system, it's an investment to the future of our society. I really think the people in a child's life help shape become who they are as an adult. Um, so you never know, um, you know, having a student come to you and knowing that they can rely on you for support can really help them um, grow up to become a better adult. And I would just like to be a part of that. So, are guidance counselors properly equipped to support low-income high school students with non-academic issues? The answer is not as simple as yes or no, but rather a more complex issue. 
While often counselors have the desire to support students and give them the tools to help them overcome poverty, there is an obvious lack of focus given to the counselors. Without adequate money, time, and training, the counselors in the low-income schools are unable to provide specialized help for students who come in with issues outside of scheduling and credits. The counselors need additional classes on poverty so they, that they can understand the students, and they also lack the resources to help the students get their basic needs met. This leaves the students in poverty without a support system, and without their basic needs met, so they are less likely to be available for learning. Facing these issues alone is something that nobody should have to deal with, so there needs to be more focus put into our school's guidance counselors, for the sake of both the student and society's well-being.